we go to the book of Genesis. Amen. The book of Genesis chapter 37. Very familiar pericope. Amen. We've heard the story. Amen. We've heard the song and watched the movie about our dear brother Joseph. Amen. And his journey from the pit to the palace. But if you would this morning with me, we're going to park right in the book of Genesis chapter 37. And we're going to read verses... 24 down to 28. Very, uh, very familiar passage. We have to say amen. amen. The word of God reads, Then they took him and cast him into a pit, and the pit was empty. There was no water in it. And they sat down to eat a meal, then they lifted their eyes and looked. And there was a company of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead, with their camels bearing spices, balm, and myrrh on their way to carry them down to Egypt. So Judah said to his brothers, What profit is there for if we kill our brother and conceal his blood? Come and let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, and let not our hand be upon him. For he is our brother and our flesh, and his brothers listen. Then the Midianite traders passed by, so the brothers pulled Joseph up out of the pit and sold him to the Ishmaelites for 20 shekels of silver. And they took Joseph to Egypt. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. For the moments I had to share with you this morning, I would like to preach from the sermon of thought, it's just a layover. It's just a layover. Most gracious and kind Father, we thank you for your word, we thank you for your will, and we thank you for your way. I ask God that you speak through me and to me, to your people, that they may be edified, they may be empowered, and the enemy may be horrified. Get the glory out of this one. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And the people of God said, Amen. 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 It's just a layover. In 1955, Delta Airlines pioneered a unique aircraft traveling concept called Spoke Hub, in which freight distribution via aircraft and flight connections became more efficient. It was a beginning shift from a point-to-point -point travel, which required more airlines, pilots, and was more expensive to ship and travel. If there were 10 destinations, you would need 45 airplanes for each location to be able to get to the next. Point-to-point -point travel was more cost-effective. It provided direct flights to destinations, did not require connecting flights, reduced travel time, loss of luggage, and even minimized aircraft pollution to the atmosphere. However, this model did not afford many travelers the opportunity to get to their final destination because not every airport provided flights to all locations, which meant depending on where you were, there were certain places you could not go. However, Delta pioneered the Spoke Hub system in 1955, which Federal Express tested, perfected, and proved that it was efficient. The Spoke Hub system centralized flights through an airport hub which provided flights to its various locations, which increased travel time and overall cost of operation by allowing everyone the opportunity to get to their final destination. Each airline would be afforded the opportunity to serve various demographics and increase their profits they wouldn't have in a point-to-point -point system. The Spoke Hub system was more effective such that the 45 airplanes that a point-to-point -point system needed to provide direct travel to and from 10 airports, a Spoke Hub system would only need nine. Each flight would travel through a hub, allowing their passengers and other passengers who otherwise wouldn't be able to, to board and reboard and offload airplanes and giving them an opportunity to get to their final destination. The only hang up for most travelers in the hub system is that layovers were required. When aircraft traveled to and through hubs, they would have to, someone say, lay over or make a temporary pit stop or detour before resuming travel. Layovers were always pre-planned and factored in 
the travel time and the departure and the arrival to the hub and departures from the hub. Layovers factored in the time needed to, to refuel the craft and to recover and the recovery of the pilots and the restocking of the stewardess necessities. Layovers allowed time for the passengers to be removed from one aircraft and the opportunity to reboard another aircraft going in a different direction to a different destination. However, most of us hate layovers because it takes too long. We're often impatient in a hurry going nowhere fast. In, in a hurry trying to get someplace to someone or to do something that isn't going anywhere. I'm going to pause right there. Most of us are rushing, uh, trying to get out of high school and college uh, only to go and pay bills. Most of us are trying to become adults, not realizing that being on your own is the best privilege. Being in your mama and your daddy's house is the best privilege uh, you could have. Uh, I wanted to be grown, but now that I'm grown, I wish that I was a teenager. Many days can anybody in here testify? Uh, most of us are working, going nowhere fast, and that's why we don't enjoy layovers. Uh, anybody ever had a layover before? I, there was one layover I can remember when I was traveling to Miami on a surprise birthday trip by my wife. I, I didn't know where we were going or what we were doing. She just took me to the airport, uh, and we had to lay over, and we laid over, and we got off the plane, uh, and we got off the plane, didn't have to take our luggage because they moved our luggage from our plane to the next. We didn't have to move our own luggage. All we had to do was get off the plane, and we got off the plane, and when we got off the plane, we went into the airport, and we had an opportunity to rest our feet. We had an opportunity to rest our legs, but more importantly, we had an opportunity to eat. If it was a direct flight, maybe we wouldn't have left as soon, but we left early enough to lay over and still get to our destination on time. All I'm trying to tell you is that maybe in this season of your life, you are in a layover. You are in a you are in a temporary holding pattern uh, where God has rerouted or detoured uh, by your traveling place and pattern uh, just to get you in a place where He can prepare you for what's next. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's a it's a layover. Somebody say it's a layover. It's a layover. It's only a layover. Don't be discouraged uh, by the time that you're taken away from your path uh, because you gotta learn one thing for certain and two things for sure. Trust the process. I used to wonder why I had to detour in certain places in life. Why I had to regard reroute me. It's because it was a part of the plan. It was a part of the process. You don't know it or not, but the layover you had last month, God was laying you over because a storm or a disaster was en route on the path that you were at. God detoured you because you still have a destination. You don't know it or not, but the layover you had five years ago in your relationship. God laid it over so it wouldn't break your heart and break your spirit and break you down to where he would have to build you up from nothing. God allows labor. Somebody say it's just a labor. It's just a labor. It's just a labor. It's just a labor. Today's text we learn that God uses labels. Labels just aren't for airports, but it's for believers. God uses Layovers. Layovers are temporary stopping points uh, en route to our destination where God temporarily suspends travel just to develop his chosen people. So when they ride to their final destination, uh, they're strong enough, smart enough, and skilled enough to succeed. Can I tell you, some of us want to get to our destination before it's time. And the truth of the matter is if we get there before it's time, we may not be prepared and it may not be prepared for us. You do know uh, that God has a final destination for you. How do I know this? Because he woke you up this morning. How do I know this? Because you got breath in your body. How do I know this? Because you're in the right state of mind. How do I know this? Because you're here this morning. Can anybody pause for a minute and give God a praise? Because God still has a destination with your name on it. I don't care how bad your life is. God still has a destination with your name on it. I don't care how rough last night was. God still has a destination with your name on it. Somebody say it's a layover. We all have the same way over every night when we go to bed. It's a sleep pattern. Huh? But guess what? Every day God creeps in our bedroom huh? and he tells your brain and your heart and your body to get up. It's time to get going. Huh? Oh, hell, God, you need to Our text today is centered around Joseph 
and his brothers. The Bible tells us that Joseph is his father's favorite son, and he gives him a coat of many colors. He gives him a coat of many colors, and the Bible tells us that Joseph's brothers hate him because he has a coat of many colors. The Bible then goes and tells us that Joseph has a dream. Joseph has a dream that his brothers and his siblings and his parents will one day bow down before him, that he will be the ruler. Joseph is different. Oh, Joseph is different, and we often look at the dream but forget the fact that Joseph is the different child. Uh, can I encourage one of you young people today? It's okay to be different. Actually, God has made us all different, so why try to be the same? And I'm going to carry some adult. Your life and your journey and your path is designed by God to be different. The Bible says he knows uh, the number of hairs on our head. How why would it say the numbers of hair? Because everybody ain't got the same number of hair. You got to be comfortable being different. The Bible says that Joseph's father made him a coat of many colors because Joseph was different, but oftentimes uh, we thank God for the coat, but we won't thank God for the challenge uh, that's attached to his coat. Yeah. Amen. Joseph uh, has a coat of many colors. Uh, we thank God for the gift, but we don't thank God for the grief. But can I tell you for a minute, uh, in your life, for every gift that God gives you, you got to handle the grief that goes with yeah. Joseph. Joseph's gifted. He's got a coat and he has a dream, uh, but the Bible says that his brothers hate him. Yeah. Yeah. The brothers hate him because he dresses different and he can see different. See, we talk about what Joseph dreams, but the truth of the matter is the fact that Joseph dreams he's different. Joseph can see differently. He can see different. Joseph can see the treasure in the trash. Joseph can see the beauty in the ashes. Joseph doesn't see what he wants to see, but Joseph sees what God shows him. Is there anybody in here that wants to see what God wants to show you? God never shows you the now. God shows you the next. And I don't know who this is for, but God has a next he wants to show you. But the truth of the matter is some of us won't see what's next because we're so in love with the now. We're so in love with where we are now. What we have now. What we're going through now. That we get blinded that God has a next. Joseph. Joseph saw the next. Uh, some call it a next, but I say it's another destination. Uh, Joseph uh, had a next, but the good news of our faith uh, is that sometimes God shows us the next. Uh, he shows us the promise, uh, but he often doesn't show us the plan. God tells us he has something for us. He shows us places. Uh, he shows us things. He shows us ideas, but he never tells us the process that it will go through. See, if he showed Joseph that Joseph would have had to go through uh, what he went through to become the governor in Egypt, I'm sure right. Joseph would have right. said, God, never mind. Yeah. See, I knew I was called to preach at a young age, but I didn't know what it took. And now that I'm older, now that I'm wiser, now that I've been through, God, uh, you could have kept this preaching mental. Because if I had to go through what I had to go through uh, just to get here today, and I knew it then, I would have avoided it. Joseph, uh, Joseph has a promise, but Joseph doesn't know the plan. And a part of God's plan is to take us to the final destination. And oftentimes, God uses layovers. Yes. Layovers. Layovers are divine reroutings. While you're en route to your final destination, did I tell you that a part of the layover, it's a pre-planned stop. Oh, I'm in the text. It's a pre-planned stop. If you read your text today, centered around the life of Joseph, Joseph is going to check on his brothers because his father sent him to check on his brothers and bring back a poor little Joseph. Did not know this would be the last day for 40 years that he would see his dad. Joseph was no longer going to return to Canaan land at this point, but the father sends Joseph down to Dothan to check on his brother. And the Bible says that when Joseph is showing up, the brothers say, oh, the dream is coming. They say, we got to kill this dream, so we're going to kill Joseph. Oh, but one brother steps in and says, you can't kill Joseph. He's our brother. Put him in the pit. But then I tell you that these pre-planned stops are detours from demonic De destruction. Oftentimes in our life, uh, God would allow us to detour and lay over because it's a pre-planned stop because God already knows uh, what the enemy's about to do. God already knows uh, everything the enemy's going to try, so he stops the journey. How does he stop the journey for Joseph? Uh, he puts Joseph in the pit. Uh, see, they wanted to kill Joseph, uh, but one brother said, don't kill him. 
put them in the pit. They put Joseph in the pit because God wouldn't let them be destroyed because he still had a destination and some of you are missing it. You ought to give God a praise because you could have been destroyed because God still had a destination for you. You could have lost your mind but God still had a destination for you. You could have committed suicide but God said, I got something better for you than you got now. Joseph's brother, oh, then Joseph's brother put him in the pit but they don't realize that this pit is a part of the plan because this pit it's a layover. Somebody says it's a layover. How do I know this was pre-planned? Oh, because the brothers are down in Dothan. They're not from Dothan. They're in Dothan. They're in Dothan. The Bible says it's the place of two wells. It's the place of two pits. But the brothers are down in Dothan. And the amount of time it took them to get to Dothan, they could not have dug the wells that were in Dothan. So they get to Dothan where there are wells. They get to Dothan where there are wells that they didn't dig. If they didn't dig it, it means that somebody already dug it, which means they were dug, they dig pits to catch people or catch prisoners or animals. And so the truth of the matter is there are wells there and, and there are wells and pits there that the brothers didn't dig, which means that the, the pit was already there. You don't realize that the pit that you're in was already there. You don't realize that the struggle that you were in is already there. It was pre-planned for you. I need you to understand this, that the coat that Joseph had, uh, it was the first challenge that Joseph faced. Uh, but the coat that Joseph had, I'm teaching my young people, the coat was, somebody say, custom made. Custom made. He had a custom made coat. Uh, and if you look, when Joseph shows up in Dothan, uh, the first thing they want to take is his coat. Uh, the coat represents the anointing of God. Uh, oh, Joseph had an anointing and a covering of God uh, that was custom made for him. Uh, but don't miss it, the custom made coat uh, has a custom challenge. And I need you to understand that every custom challenge in your life, it was custom made for you. The pit was custom made for you. The pit was custom made with your name on it at a certain time just for the right layover. You gotta understand Joseph's in the pit because the pit is a part of the promise but we don't see it that way. We say it in, in chapter 50 where we say what the enemy meant for evil, God meant for our good. But in the moment, we only see the evil, not the good. But if you just hang on in there, I, I promise you in the end, you'll be able to say it. what the enemy meant for evil. God, it's just a layover. Somebody say it. It's just a layover. Layovers are divine rerouting in route to your final destination. Layovers are pre-planned stops, and they're a part of the plan. But why does God allow layovers or use layovers in our life? Layovers are for the sole purpose of redirection. Somebody say redirection. The brothers are deviant, and they want to destroy Joseph. But God says, you can't destroy it because I'm going to develop it. He says, you can't break Joseph because I got to build Joseph. You can't kill Joseph now because you don't understand that Joseph's next has your name attached to it. Joseph's next has your name attached to it. You don't realize it, that what you're going through, that what you're wrestling with, somebody else's salvation is attached to it. This detour, this layover is a part of the plan. It's a part of the plan. Layovers allow for redirection. But I like this and somebody ought to be blessed by this. Layovers happen very specifically. They happen after rejection and before release. They happen after rejection and before release. Oh, rejection is something we all face. Anybody in here ever been rejected? Anybody ever here ever been denied? Anybody ever here had, their, had somebody turn their back on them? Joseph was rejected by his brothers. We all see that in the text, right? Am I in the text today? His brothers, re his brothers rejected him. His brothers rejected him, but the traitors received him. The brothers wanted to destroy him, but the traitors saw the value in him. You gotta understand that when man rejects you, it's only setting you up so God can release you. It's just a layover. This pit that Joseph's in, it's just a layover. It's in between rejection and release. And I don't know who's in a pit today. Pits are dark and lonely places. Pits are the places you can't pull yourself out of. Pits are places where you can't even ask for help because you're by yourself. Anybody ever been in a pit before? Anybody ever been in a dark, lonely place? All by yourself. Pits are in between rejection and release. But can I tell you that the pit that you're in, God, this pit is a perfect place to meet God for yourself. For the first time in Joseph's life, he's meeting God for himself. He's in a pit by himself. Lonely, it's dark and isolated. But this is the first time that we see in the text where God moves on Joseph's behalf. We see the gift that God gives him. We see the grief that God allows happy in his life. But the truth of the 
the matter is, is that for the first time in Joseph's life, he's able to experience the grace of God. He's not even able to experience the grace of God. I'm going to ask that one more time.
layover. Yeah. You're at the layover, but you don't realize that what you need to get your flight back off the ground, you don't have. There's a man named Jesus that I talked about a few minutes ago. He is the refuel that you need for your plane to get to your destination. You're in a layover. But today I want to give you the ticket that you need for liftoff. I, I put it in regular Christian terms. There's somebody here who doesn't know Jesus. In the Bible, of your sins. We offer him you today. The best part of the service is when we open the doors of the church. If you don't know Jesus today, this is the best time to come. Thank you. 